What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2019 AP Calc AB free response question number six. So let's jump into this. And for this question here, the first thing we want to do is find H prime of two. And we have a bunch of information here. We have F, G, and H are twice differentiable. We have G of two equals H of two equals four. And we have that this line here is tangent to both the graph of G and H at X equals two. So in order to find H prime of two, we just have to use the idea that the slope of the tangent line is equal to h prime of 2, since this line, once again, is tangent to h at x equals 2. So then here, just think about the thought process for a is you just have to think about how do you identify the slope of a tangent line? And just imagine what this line would look like if it was in the form y equals mx plus b. So if you were to distribute that, you'd have 4 plus 2 thirds x. And it doesn't matter that 2 thirds times minus 2 is negative four thirds, all that matters is the coefficient of x, and the coefficient of x is two thirds. So that's going to be our slope. For the next part here, we have the function a of x defined as this product, and we want to find an expression for a prime, and then we're going to find a prime of two. So for part b, we just have to know the product rule. If a of x is equal to three x to the third times h of x, then a prime of x, if we just use the product rule, we just treat this first part here as, this is going to be our u term, and then this will act as our v term. And we just have to know the product rule. And the product rule, we have u prime v plus uv prime. So then when we apply the derivative here, we're going to have we're going to have 9x squared times h of x plus we're going to have 3x to the third times the derivative of h is h prime. So here's our derivative here for a prime of x. And we'll just make this a little bit neater. So this is 3x to the third h prime. And then we have a prime of two, so we're just evaluating this at x equals two, is nine times two squared h of two plus three times two to the third power h prime of two. And now we just have to make sure we evaluate this correctly. We have nine times two to the second power is four, so we have 36. h of two, they told us, is equal to four. And now we have plus, do parentheses exponents first, we have eight times three is 24. And h prime of two, we found in the last example was two thirds. So this was our answer from part A. And now we just have to simplify this. But just know on the AP test, if you're not confident in your mental math, then you could just leave your answer like this. But if we want to just work this out, it always bothers me to leave my answer like this. We could just say that two thirds times 24, 24 over three simplifies to eight and eight times two is 16. So A prime of two is just equal to 144 plus 16, which is 160. So here's our solution to part B. All right, and part C is where things get a little bit wacky. This question was definitely very tricky, and there's a lot of language we have to be very careful to make sure that we include. So we have h of x is this function here, specifically for x not equal to 2, because when h is equal, I'm sorry, when x is equal to 2, we have h of 2 is equal to 4. And it's known that this limit can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule, and we're going to use this limit as x approaches 2 of h of x, the goal here is to find what is f of 2 and f prime of 2. And we have to show all the work that leads to our answers. So notice in the beginning, they told us that f, g, and h are twice differentiable. And what that allows us to say is that our functions f, g, and h are not only uh, are now not only differentiable, but f prime, g prime, and h prime are also differentiable, which means that they're also continuous. So we're going to have to use this idea of continuity a lot in this question. So here, if the limit can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. Well, we could say that since h is differentiable, h is continuous. And once you know that a function is continuous, this tells us that the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is equal to h of 2. So this is by definition of continuity. And they told us in the beginning that h of 2 is equal to 4. So we know that this limit as x approaches 2 of h of x, we could say is equal to 4. But now we just have to think very carefully about what the rest of the stuff means. Well, notice here they told us that this limit can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule. And if you, the next thought process I'm going to go through with here is that I imagine if I were to plug in 2 to the top and bottom, if I plug 2 in on top, I'm going to have 2 squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So the only time I could use L'Hopital's rule when I have a 0 in the numerator is when I also have a 0 in the denominator. So that information tells us that the limit as x approaches 2 of the stuff on bottom also has to be 0. So now we just have to summarize this very carefully. So we could say here, since L'Hopital applies, and we'll just abbreviate, since L'Hopital applies, 
to the limit as x approaches to of h of x and we should also say here the limit as x approaches to of the numerator function x squared minus 4 is equal to 0 this means then that the limit as x approaches to of the denominator 1 minus we have f of x in parentheses to the third is also equal to 0 and we'll just make space here so with this information here, we have to be very, very careful. The goal is to find f of 2. And it may be obvious here that f of 2 is going to be equal to 1. But before we just go ahead and plug in x equals 2 to this, how do we know we're allowed to plug x equals 2 into f of x when we're finding limits? The only way you're allowed to evaluate a limit by substitution is if you know all the functions involved are continuous. So we should make mention here that f of x is continuous. And how do we know f of x is continuous? Because f is twice differentiable. So then from here, we could go ahead and say that the limit as x approaches 2, so this tells us then, so we could say, so the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 minus f of x to the third power is equal to 1 minus f of 2 to the third power, which is equal to 0. So then this tells us we could say, therefore, f of 2 is equal to 1. So this is a really big result here that f of 2 is equal to 1, because now we're going to use this information here to help us find f prime of 2. So part C was very, very, very involved. There was a lot of stuff you had to do for part C. So here, once again, because L'Hopital's rule applies, they said L'Hopital's rule applies, so we could say here, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 2, and we'll apply L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the function on top is 2x, and the derivative of the function on bottom, we're using chain rule. So we're going to have minus 3 times f of x to the second power, and we're multiplying by f prime of x. So there's the derivative, and once again, the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x, this is all equal to 4. But another little trap here. I have to be very careful. I did say that f is continuous, which means when I'm finding the limit as x approaches 2 of anything involving f of x, I could just substitute an x equals 2. But I did not say that f prime of x is continuous yet. So we should just make small mention here. Since f is a twice differentiable function, f prime is continuous. So the limit as x approaches 2 of f prime of x is equal to f prime of 2. So now using this, this information, we're going to complete this question. So we could say that the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x over negative 3, we have f of x squared, f prime of x. This limit is equal to, and now we could just plug in 2. We're going to have 2 times 2 on top is 4 over negative 3, f of 2. Remember, f of 2 from before we said is equal to 1. So this is times 1 squared, and we have f prime of 2. And remember, this whole limit is equal to 4. So then the rest is just going to be algebra. So this tells us here that we're going to have 4 over negative 3 times 1 times f prime of 2. So just negative 3 f prime of 2 is equal to 4. And then if we complete the algebra here, we could divide both sides by 4. So here we're going to have 1 over negative 3 f prime of 2 is equal to 1. And if we cross multiply here, we have negative 3 f prime of 2 is equal to 1, which tells us that f prime of 2 is equal to negative 1 third. So there was a ton of stuff we had to write for this question here. Okay, but one of the big ideas when you're explaining questions like this is to make sure you mention continuity so that you could, you could actually just evaluate the limit by plugging in. Because if you're trying to go for the perfect score on the test, like with these free response questions, those are the tiny details that you have to include in order to get 9 out of 9 on a question like this. So for part D, we're just trying to look here and say if k of x, if our function k of x is continuous at x equals 2, and k of x is a function that's between g of x and h of x, and we're told here that g of x is less than or equal to h of x on the interval from 1 to 3. So remember, in order to establish continuity, the thing that we need to establish here to show that k is continuous at x equals 2 is we have to show that the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x is equal to k of 2. So 
what we should make mention of here is that g and h are both differentiable functions, so they are both continuous. Now, since we were told before that g of 2 equals h of 2 equals 4, then that means here that we could say that the limit, since g is continuous, we could say the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is equal to g of 2, which is equal to 4. So this is true, and we could say the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x is equal to h of 2, which is also equal to 4. So that's a result of this. If you want to include a therefore here, we could say therefore this limit is equal to this, and this limit is equal to this. But now we just have to think about the rest of the information that we were given here. Well, since the limit of g of x and h of x, which are the outside functions here, since those two limits as x approaches 2 is equal to 4, and k of x is between g of x and h of x on the interval from 1 to 3, then that tells us the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x is also equal to 4. Okay, so for this question here, the last idea that we need is once again, if we know that on some graph at x equals 2, that the limit of the greatest function, a, uh, h in this case, is heading to 4, and the limit of the bottom function, g of x, is also equal to 4, then the function in between here, k of x, is also heading to the same place. So this is by the squeeze theorem, but we have to be very careful here. All that this establishes is that the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x exists. The next thing that we have to show here is that k of 2 is also equal to 4. So just think about here, because we were told that g of 2 is equal to h of 2 is equal to 4, and k is a function satisfying this inequality on the interval from 1 to 3, well then that means we could also say, so also g of 2 is less than or equal to k of 2, which is less than or equal to h of 2. But now think about which values we were given here. We were told that g of 2, once again, is equal to 4. So we have 4 is less than or equal to k of 2, which is less than or equal to h of 2 is equal to 4. So this tells us then, this implies that if k of 2 is between 4 and 4, k of 2 has to be equal to 4. So now this establishes the second part of continuity, but now we just have to make a formal statement. So then here, what we could say is, we could say, therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x is equal to k of 2, which is equal to 4. So k of x is continuous at x equals 2. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on question 6 from the 2019 Calc A B test. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel, and if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.